Hi, my name is Kathleen Lugrich, and I'm the Manager of Programs and Ticketing for the Army Historical Foundation and your host for Army Artifacts, a new program for Army Historical Foundation members that will demonstrate that Army history can be found everywhere. Today, my guest is Josh Trower, who is the Education Program Coordinator for the Southern Museum of Civil War and Locomotive History, which is just northwest of Atlanta and Marietta, Georgia in Kennesaw, and is a Smithsonian affiliate. And today, Josh is going to talk to us about the Great Locomotive Chase of 1862. Josh, thank you for being here today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Now, here on Army Artifacts, we're not just focusing on artifacts, but also on Army-related stories. Can you start off by telling us what exactly is the Great Locomotive Chase? So the Great Locomotive Chase occurred April 12, 1862, and it happened actually right here in uh, Kennesaw, Georgia, which was then called Big Shanty. Uh, Union soldiers uh, from the 2nd, 21st, and uh, 33rd Ohio Infantry Regiments from uh, Joshua Sills Brigade, uh, they were led by a, a spy and scout named James J. Andrews. Uh, they would end up sneaking their way from Tennessee into Georgia, took the train all the way down to Marietta, Georgia, near Atlanta. <clears throat> they would spend the night there, and uh, their, their numbers at the beginning of the mission were 24, uh, but two were actually waylaid by some uh, Confederate artillerymen in Tennessee that were a little suspicious of their cover story that they wanted to meet up with some friends of theirs in Georgia and join their regiment because they're all in civilian dress. Uh, so those two men, uh, Samuel Llewellyn and uh, Obed Smith, they decided to just join up with that Confederate artillery battery there and they would desert later. Uh, they would lose two more in Marietta because two forgot to tip their bellmen at the hotel in Marietta and they would miss, they would miss the mission. So Andrews and his men eventually will just be 20. Uh, they get on the morning train on the morning of April 12, 1862. It's led by a steam locomotive called the General. That uh, was common for locomotives to have names back then. Uh, they would make their way north to Big Shanty. Now at Big Shanty, everyone would get off for breakfast. Uh, this was before the age of the ornate dining cars. So often uh, trains would make a breakfast and dinner stop at local eateries. So everybody got off, and then James J. Andrews and his and his raiders sprung into action. Uh, they uncoupled uh, the three passenger cars from the three box cars. Uh, most of the Andrews raiders, as they were called, would pile into one of the box cars, uh, but two would join Andrews in the cab of a locomotive, uh, William, uh, William Knight and Wilson Brown, because they had railroad experience. Uh, they made their way north, much to the chagrin of the train's conductor, William Fuller, who ends up chasing after them and he would chase after them on foot and then he would later commandeer three locomotives so that's where you get the great locomotive chase from <clears throat> uh, the mission what the raiders wanted to do is from atlanta to chattanooga uh, the western atlantic railroad it was a very important supply route for the confederacy uh, so they were hoping to sabotage the line tear up track burn bridges so the confederacy couldn't use it to reinforce against a union attack that was going to come on chattanooga well, they end up getting into this great chase. <clears throat> They're not really able to do lasting damage to the railroad. Uh, shortly after they leave from Big Shanty, uh, they will actually cut a telegraph line to keep the word from spreading. Uh, they make their way past, his, past places like uh, Etowah, Georgia, where there's a big industrial center, and there's actually a bridge over the Etowah River there. Uh, they don't actually burn that bridge or destroy the steam locomotive that was sitting there that was on a siding. Uh, Andrews thought, uh, we which just which just keep going. The mission seems to be going well, and uh, they're he was trying to keep to the train's regular posted schedule. Though the train is raising a little suspicion, they would end up actually stopping by a railroad track gang uh, that was uh, these were men working on the line. And the leader of that track gang, he's a little suspicious <clears throat> because the passenger cars aren't on the train. The train's running a little early, and they definitely he definitely doesn't recognize anybody in the cab of the locomotive. But James J. Andrews' cover story is that uh, they're trying to rush some ammunition to General Beauregard in, uh, in uh, the other side of Tennessee, and he buys that story. But when William Fuller gets there on foot, the train's conductor, he tells them this train's been stolen, and then people realize, oh, these must be Union saboteurs. So they actually will loan Fuller a push cart, and he will actually push his way with a couple other uh, railroaders on a push cart with a stick with a pole moving their way down the track. Uh, that steam engine that the Andrews Raiders did not sabotage at Etowah, uh, it's called the Yona, and then Fuller would actually commandeer that locomotive. And so gain on the Andrews Raiders. Uh, the Raiders make their way to uh, Kingston, Georgia. 
uh, there they're actually stuck because there are several tr southbound trains and they got to wait there for an hour and five minutes all why fuller is gaining on them uh, uh andrews is getting pretty impatient he wants to just push out which is raising some of the suspicions of the railroaders at the kingston georgia depot they're wondering why is this stranger so impatient why is he so willing to risk a head-on collision but after an hour and five minutes uh the raiders make their way north out of kingston fuller comes up behind them you will end up having to commandeer another locomotive to chase after them uh, just north of kingston the raiders pull up a piece of rail to, to stop any pursuit so then fuller is again on foot he's back on foot again chasing after the andrews raiders <clears throat> and then Fuller comes across another steam locomotive called the Texas that's on a southbound freight. It actually had just recently met on the line, the Andrews Raiders and the General. It tells him that his train has been hijacked, and then he's able to commandeer the Texas. Uh, they drop off their freight cars on a siding, and they chase after the General backwards. As the Texas is gaining on the General, the Raiders realize they have some pursuit. Uh, they try and throw wooden railroad ties out of the cars to slow down any pursuit, try and rip up another piece of rail. Uh, they try snapping another telegraph wire in Dalton, Georgia, up north towards the uh, Tennessee-Georgia border to keep the word from spreading. Uh, but unfortunately, when they do that, as, as a lot, the, um, there's a Confederate message that's able to get through the General Ledbetter saying the train has been hijacked. And so they end up getting hemmed in. A Confederate, cal Confederate cavalry severed a line to the north of them. Uh, the Raiders make their way through Tunnel Hill, which is uh, near the Tennessee-Georgia border, and then have to abandon the locomotive at Ringgold, Georgia. They, they're running out of fuel, they're running out of wood, running out of water. They all scatter. They all head for the hills, and they're all captured. And what will happen is eight will be executed, including uh, Andrews, because they're in civilian dress against, against the rules of war, considered spies. Uh, eight would later escape, and then six would be exchanged in uh, 1863 in a prisoner exchange. And those six that were exchanged would be the first Andrews Raiders, uh, the first of 19, to receive the Medal of Honor. They have an audience with Secretary of War Stanton and uh, Abraham Lincoln. They receive the Medal of Honor, and they receive $100 for their service. And then they're, they're back serving in the Army, many of them for the duration of the war. So the Andrews Raid was the first Medal of Honor uh, mission. And at the museum, the Southern Museum in Kennesaw, we actually have the steam locomotive, the General, for you to visit. I cannot even fathom trying to steal a train, let alone <laughs> chasing one on foot. But mm -hmm. did the event of the chase change anything in terms of protecting railroads and trains on either side of the Civil War? Here at the museum, uh, we talk often about how the Civil War was the first railroad war. Uh, the first time they moved lots of men and materials by rail. Uh, the Western Atlantic Railroad uh, from Atlanta to Chattanooga, still a vital freight route. It was, it was important during the Great Locomotive Chase. Uh, it was important uh, during the Battle of Chickamauga when Longstreet's men were moved from uh, the Army of Northern Virginia, north on the WNA to the Battle of Chickamauga to reinforce Braxton Bragg. And then that helps push the, the uh, Union to um, Chattanooga where they get bottled up. And then the Union does the Confederacy one better. They move Mitt Hooker's men and Howard's men from the Army of the Potomac by rail through West Virginia, through Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, down to Tennessee, to Chattanooga to break the, to break the Confederate siege there. Uh, the, the, both sides tried to guard the railroads, but often uh, an invalid out soldier wouldn't be able to do much guarding a piece of rail against any Union or Confederate cavalry that were coming by. And also the WNA would have, was, of course, the uh, main supply route for Sherman's army in May of 1864 as they went south in the, the famous Atlanta campaign. Now, the general, you said it's a steam locomotive, correct? Yes. Uh, it was built in 1855 by the Rogers Locomotive Works in Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, the engine ran off wood and... Um, well, it, it was a wood-fired locomotive. Uh, you take wood from the tender, put it in the firebox. Uh, that heats up your water, uh, turning into steam, and moves the cylinders. That, it was kind of, it was a very large locomotive for the time. Uh, in comparison to the steam locomotives that would come in the early 20th century, it's rather small. It's known as a 440 locomotive. It has four small pilot wheels and four big driving wheels. 
Uh, it would spend time serving in the Atlanta campaign where it was seriously damaged. It was repaired for service after the war. It was converted to firing coal after the Civil War. Uh, they realized the locomotive was historically significant, so it was restored in the 1890s and taken to the Chicago World's Fair, New York World's Fair, uh, various uh, various uh, Civil War reunions. Uh, there were actually reunions of the Andrews Raiders and the railroaders that chased after them. They actually got together after the Civil War. Uh, the engine spent a long time on display in Chattanooga Union Station, about 50 years in Tennessee. And then in the 1960s, uh, for the 100th anniversary of the Civil War, 1960, uh, the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, which was a successor to the Western Atlantic Railroad, they actually restored the locomotive to operation. And when they restored it to operation, uh, they converted it from coal firing to uh, oil firing. So the wood pile in the tender today is just for show. Uh, there's an oil bunker under the wood and the fireman, it's kind of hard to shovel oil. He actually controls a series of valves and that would spray the oil, it atomizes it, sends it into the firebox and that's what makes the firebox hot to heat the water up. Uh, the last time the engine ran was in 1966, and it's been on display here at the Southern Museum since 1972. How much of the general is original? Most of the original pieces are actually under the cab of the locomotive. It's had lots of parts swapped out over the years. Of course, it's not the original boiler, uh, but we consider it to be the soul. The soul of the locomotive exists since during the Civil War. And so it is the actual locomotive, the Raiders hijacked on that fateful day, April 12th, 1862. Are you able to step on to the general, to step on to the train? We, it, 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 we treat it as any uh, historical artifact. It's the largest artifact in our collection, but we do open it up for cab tours uh, usually once per year at, at a locomotive, uh, at, well, at an event called Railroad Blind Open. That's so cool. That's really special moment to actually step on board the train. Although I think a more special moment would be making people run after the train. <laughs> uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, you, you take it out on the main line. Uh, we can show you all the valves inside the locomotive. You put yourself in that fe the feeling of being a railroad fireman and an engineer. So how are the chase and the train, the general, important to Army and U.S. history? Well, I, I like to think of the Great Locomotive Chase is like almost the first uh, special forces mission in, in military history. I mean, these were the first time, the first time that the Medal of Honor was handed out. And of course, uh, the medal, it used to be in the military, they kind of thought that medals were more of a European thing, but they're in this great civil war and they felt there needed to be something to honor the valor of the people uh, that took part of it. And so I, I feel the general that fits up there with the legacy of uh, the Army Rangers at Port du Hoc uh, during the Normandy landings, uh, the, these great uh, special missions that these men showed such incredible, incredible bravery. And what else can our members expect to see at the museum or what else can they look forward to? Uh, we have many uh, artifacts related to the role of the Civil War and the railroads. Uh, we have the uh, display related to the Glover Machine Works, which was a steam locomotive factory in nearby Marietta, Georgia. They made steam locomotives from about 1900 to 1930. We have all the original, uh, we have many original artifacts to uh, relate to that. Uh, we have a Mercy boxcar, which was a French boxcar, a 40 and eight boxcar. So it could, you can handle either 40 men or eight horses as a type of boxcars that French railways used during uh, World War I and World War II. And after World War II, in the, what was known as the French Train of Remembrance, uh, France donated several, uh, well, 49 bus cars filled with gifts as a thank you for the assistance that the United States gave them during the war and immediately after the war with the recovery. And we have George's car in our education center. It's been beautifully, beautifully restored. That's so exciting. Now, the more important question for several of our train enthusiasts, are there models of the general that they can purchase in your gift shop? Uh, we have that we have all we have the general's image on all kinds of items in our gift shop uh, you need license plates uh you need uh mouse pads we have everything you need and uh at the museum we have big events uh, such as uh, trains 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 in january uh that's when we uh several local model train clubs set up in the museum and you will definitely see at that event uh the model general the model general running because the famous lionel train company in the late 1950s, uh, they produced the general. So the general is kind of a pop cultural icon among railroading. 
Now, I want to thank Josh for being my guest today. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit their website at www.southernmuseum.org. I would also like to add that I've actually visited Kennesaw twice and the museum, and it's just a really lovely small town. And honestly, for any runners, you have no excuse in skipping this on your running tour of the USA because there's a 5K series throughout the year so that you can better see the town and experience what it has to offer any time of the year. But thank you so much for watching another episode of Army Artifacts. <laughs>